All right, we're here on the channel today because my buddy Yusuf hit me up on Instagram and he was asking me, he's like, yo, how did you do that? Like, may I, may I affect and stuff? And I've only been on this for a few months, but I guess people like it. So I was like, you know what? Let me give you a tutorial. And shout outs to Stephen Clark. He's actually the one who's been acting in a bunch of my videos and he did a phenomenal job just even like um, simulating the effect of like an energy beam being in his hand and stuff. So make sure that your actor also knows what they're doing when you're trying to do this stuff. It does matter. Um, anyways, to get into this, the first shot, like I said, we had with Steven just standing here and you can see him just standing here. The next thing that I did was went into the layer and then I tracked his hands. I picked a point. We got that tracker data afterwards and then we parented it to the null. The null now has all that data inside of it. Make a long story short, what's happening here now? Um, essentially, you know, oh, sorry, I'm not into the composition window. If I were to turn off the flare, and the point light, what's happening here is when you turn on the flare and you made it, there was nothing for it to track to. So I created a point light and that was just me pretty much just going in, putting new light and then I created a spotlight, right? And then that was it. So, I mean, sorry, a point light. When I created the point light now, that gave the flare somewhere to parent to. Do you get it? So now I can actually, and then you track all the data for the shock waves and stuff down to the null so that it's tracking onto the scene perfectly. So what I did with these shock waves and stuff, if you wanna see, was um, these aren't rocket science at all. This is a rotation. And then it's actually a scale going inward. So it, it just kind of simulated that, that feel of, um, I guess you would say like an energy kind of coming in. And then there's a time remap that I did on it just to kind of like sell that effect more. And then turbulent displacement, we got a bit, and that, and like I said, this is very subjective. Like you can put on what you want, what you feel is good, but like, it's just an effect used on pretty much everything. We put a glow on top of it so that it kind of gives it more of that oomph. And I don't know, like glows just look cool. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's no other reason why I put it in except for that. Um, and after we're done that, we pretty much just put um, an adjustment layer on the top. And if you see the adjustment layer, it's just the heat distortion with a mask that's pretty much um, keyframe to move around with it. So this part is not a lot of anything much going on. It's literally just me standing, he's, he's standing there and then we just let him try and simulate that, that effect of power coming in. And then we got that there. Um, the next thing that we did after that was, um, that's full send, Stephen behind. And this is an initial shot when we had the power up. So again, this looks a little more tricky, but it's really not. So you can see the two nulls actually there for two separate trackers. Um, we did the same thing. This is the initial footage. Once I tracked the, the shots, that the parts that I needed, I parented them to this null. And if, if, if you don't know what that looks like, um, when, when you go into a scene like this and you hit your tracker, you, you get to change your motion source. So whatever you track to, it's like you just choose one of those and then you can kind of follow it going through your system. But not to get too deep into that because it's really just stuff everyone knows. These shock waves were exactly the same thing. I just rinse, lather, repeat the same exact um, cycle. In fact, I actually, um, I think it was command. Yeah, command and then copied. And then I went into the next composition and actually pasted it and then just rechanged all the data and then retracted it so that it looked similar, but in a different way, but it matched that scene, if you get what I'm saying. So a lot of this isn't actually um, a bunch of crazy stuff that I'm doing. It's just me using the same keyframe effects in a different spot. So if you can see like, that's him when he's selling the shot. You can see him shaking his hands a bit and stuff, like just to kind of make it look more real. And then if you look at the composition when we come in now, we have it there with his hands kind of like going in like that, right? Um, I think that's supposed to be on top of there, actually. Yeah. And then we created a small feather mask just so that his hand isn't completely like just blowing out so it looks a little more realistic. And, and that was it for that shot there. Um, and then on top of here, you see the screen kind of moving a bit. Well, all that was was me putting a slider control on here. And then, and this is um, thanks to Brandon actually, he taught me this, I didn't know anything about it. I hit P on the keyboard and then you hit option and then you hit, and you hit that so you can pull up your expression controls. 
And what I did from there is I type in wiggle and then you write in your expressions out values. So say five and 50, um, you go to the, I believe it's the magnitude and you're gonna pick whip after highlighting that over to your slider control and that's gonna give you control over it in your slider. So if I wanted to keyframe it shaking or kind of moving more at a certain part or I can do that through my slider instead of having it just kind of like erratically happening throughout the whole entire clip. So that's another beautiful way for you to parent effects to the slider control so that you can use them when you want to instead of having to go through everything. It's just a good way to kind of like control having all of your effects instead of just erratically using them whenever you don't kind of. And then from here, that's another one. Like I said, Brandon showed me this too. I, I pretty much just sold this layer and uh, I just created a mask and then I just used the expansion values on it to keyframe um, when you get that, like kind of like, I guess you can say like power boost feeling or whatever it is. But my computer's like choking up right now. Um, and then, like I said, the, this is one of the other shots that we did, if you're looking at it, because there was four shots, I believe we went through on the frames. This one is the exact same thing. When I got the track there now, you can see that the Kamehameha is kind of sitting there. Because if I took off um, the flare right now, you would see there's nothing there. If I put it back on now, we have it back into the scene. Um, and then I tracked it. And actually over here, I went more manual into the tracking because once it left this area, I was having a hard time figuring out how to make the beam come into perspective more. So all I did was really go in there for manual keyframes and started switching the position so that the perspective matched. And, and then, sorry, ooh, don't wanna do that. And then we got the beam coming across the screen right here. And then the last one, like we said, and I called it full send. Um, don't ask me why, but um, just like, so right here, he turns the corner and then now the beams like emitting back and forth. Well, that was pretty simple too. Uh, it's the exact same thing, copy and paste, track the data to right here. You can see the null right there. Like you can literally see where all the data is for the track. And then shock waves, like I'm not joking to you, like these were just copy and paste effects, uh, turbulent displacement, just change some values, the tint so that I can change it, um, the colors a bit, cause it was just too bright in certain things. And then I got to change the mapping of the color and then the glow just to add a bit more of that oomph to it. Because honestly, if you don't have the glow, it kind of just looks a little too flat in my opinion, but there's probably a better way to do what I did. This is just the best way I can think of creatively with my mind. And then, um, yeah, like when he gets to over here, you can see the mask right here, which is pretty much, like I said, feathered out with an expansion on the keyframe to kind of make it look like it disperses like a shock wave. And then um, we put a mask, uh, sorry, I put a mask over his body over here because it just didn't look good at all if it's all spilling all over the place. And I just thought that was cheesy as shit. So I just put a mask on front of it and um, we ended up with this. Yeah, and then if you're looking at the light, you're like, whoa, how the hell is it doing that? Well, if you look here, um, I'm sorry, I think it's, um, I think it's flares. Sorry, one second. Or is it the point of light? No, it's the flares. But yeah, that's, that's a keyframe value of the brightness and the size pretty much a couple times in a row just to make it look like the beam's actually pulsing and, um, you could probably, in my opinion, take it like a level further if you really wanted to. Like, um, for instance, I don't know, this adjustment layer is here. Like you could probably go right here. Uh, we can try and separate that. And then um, let me, let me, let me see. See how this looks. Hmm. I mean, I think it looks pretty dope, so. And then after all of that and the editing and stuff, like we ended up with this. So 
so as you can see like there wasn't like a whole bunch of stuff that i can really say i did too special um there's some wiggle expressions at the end um after pre-comping everything um maybe i'll scale in uh don't forget to add motion blur that was a big one i should have said that from the start but motion blur to crap out of like everything it kind of like blends it in more easily um production crate was great i had a bunch of effects i got to use from there and then um like i said optical flares and that's all it really was and some creativity with some masking feathering and um that was it um i'll be back though show you guys some more tutorials some dope stuff when i get better but otherwise than that thank you appreciate it and be back again with another one peace out